today is the second part of the intro for Mass. Um, so I've already, if you haven't seen the first part, the first part I show you how to install it. I also show you how to do install cluster SSH. So I'm going to remove that from the agenda um, just to sort of revise there. You can go manage actual and if you have a look at the top there, there is uh, install cluster SSH. So uh, that's all there. That works on both Mac and uh, Linux. So I'm going to remove that from the agenda for this video. Recap what it is. Mass is for uh, managing lots of uh, servers at, uh, well, in, in a scalable way. Um, so if we go mass list, and uh, we're going to get a list of all of the uh, hosts that uh, this particular installation knows about. If I was to do it on my uh, desktop here, there would be something like 900 servers there because uh, there's uh, uh, all the stuff from work and everything there. Today I just want to show you some examples. Screen is cool. That is something which um, I've used hardly anywhere near as much as I thought I would, but I think I'll use it a lot more when I'm actually working, um, like if I'm, if I'm SSHing from the Kindle, for example. <laughs> Upload or download, I use that a hell of a lot. Tunnels, I haven't used very much, um, so it's still very, very alpha, but um, that's still worth uh, playing about with. Um, so just finishing off the recap, so we've uh, listed out some hosts, we can refine that. Um, let's, uh, uh, so we're going to refine that and we're going to say we want um, uh, Zalapi and we want um, Bobbery. Like so, that's just a regular expression. Um, and then in the last video I brought up uh, cluster SSH, like so. Um, let's start with, uh, let's play with screen. So do I have screen installed? No I do not. sudo apt-get install screen. As I'm uh, doing this I'm having flashbacks to the days when what I'm doing right now would have taken hours and hours. <laughs> cool, okay, so now if we have screen, a um, so we're out of that. So now let's go back to here and now we're just going to type in screen. And so you can see here if we go boink boink we now have um, a screen session where we have our different uh, terminals sitting right there. Um, uh, do I have this on here? Oh, I don't have it on there. Okay that's fine. But anyway um, that's really all I want to show you um, on that, is just, uh, yeah, it's cool, I like it. Um, upload, download. So let's get into the temp folder and we're going to um, uh, place, <laughs> okay, uh, so now if we go back over to here and we're just going to go uh, download equals and we're going to say etc slash hosts. And if I've done that right, I've made a mistake. So if we go mass help equals download and oh, that means I've struck a bug. Okay, so um, I actually had a bug there and that was all to do with the external FQDN since we weren't setting that. Um, we're getting the syntax error. So I've just fixed that and uh, committed that. So now if we go into here, and this should just work. So you can see here that uh, it is, uh, yeah, that's the command that is running in the background. And if we have a look, we should now see we have some stuff. And you can see that I asked for the etc hosts file. And so you can see um, the lappy and hosts, and there's my host file on Zalapi, and uh, and we can go localhost hosts, and you can see that I've got my host file on there. Um, so now let's say we want to modify these two files. So let's go to localhost um, hosts. So we're just going to say localhost. Um, and we're going to make that the cookie monster. Cool. 
there's that. Um, I'm not going to modify Zalapi because that actually has something in there which I don't want to sort of show in the tutorial. So now we want to go and upload those again. So let's go over to um, help equals upload. And so here's some stuff available to us to be able to upload. Uh, these first two are not especially relevant right now. Um, so you can see that's come up because of that. That one's come up because of that. But these ones here are quite interesting. This here is probably the most common use case. We'll come to that in just a moment. This one here, however, is... This one here is actually the counterpart to what I just did. Um, so if we now come back to our previous download, and we just say upload M to M, and... <laughs> Let's try spelling it right. That is going to fail. And the reason why that's going to fail is that under my user, I don't have access to write to that file. So instead, I'm going to write that to my home directory. OK, hopefully that has worked. Um, let's go and find out. So we're now going to take this out, and we're going to go CSSH. And look at that. We have the host file there. So now we can actually go, uh, let's just hop onto this one here for a sec. You can see the file that has come up is on here. And if we just grab cook in hosts, and you'll see that it's not in that file. Um, there's a particular entry I don't want to show in there, which is why I haven't sort of catted it. But basically, you can see that both entries have. Uh, uh, actually, let's just take this a step further. We'll just um, boink. Um, we're just going to go uh, bork, and we're going to just add that to uh, Zilapi like that. And now we'll do this upload again. And we'll cluster SSH onto there. Okay, and now if we, so if we grab cook in hosts, and you'll see that it's only on this local box, and then if we go over to here, and we say um, bork, and you'll see that's only on the other one, so it just demonstrates that it's uh, uploading nicely. And so on both of these we could now uh, do a sudo and then copy these to the right place. Um, now notice uh, actually, hang on, we'll just remove that and we'll get out of there. Notice that a minus R is done here. So, uh, this is copying that whole folder. And so, when we did the download before, a minus R is done here as well, which means that we're going to recursively copy. So, this could have been a folder, um, in which case we would have, would have had an entire folder sitting in that uh, directory. So, it means that you can work with a bunch of files. You can very efficiently go and copy between lots and lots of hosts, and you can just say, hey, just go and do it, uh, then go and get your coffee. That's enough on uploading and downloading. Let's play with tunnels. So let's go mass help equals tunnel. So tunnel socks. Socks is useful for, um, for browser stuff. It is useful for uh, a tool called Proxy Chains, which is really awesome for uh, testing applications that don't actually directly support using a proxy server. Um, you can do some really cool stuff with that. So I recommend checking out Proxy Chains if you haven't fiddled with it already. Uh, but anyway, let's use tunnel specific for now, because uh, this is how you can specify things quite manually. So what we need to do here is um, let's this is completely following the help because it's so long since I've done it. Uh, so let's go and grab... Um, we're just going to grab my laptop, like so. And we're going to say tunnel, because you can see here that it's tunnel, tunnel is an alias for tunnel specific. So this typing is nice. Uh, and we're going to say from port, and that is going to be... 8022, just for the sake of it. We could leave it at that, and that would probably work. This example, which I did just here, I just tested that this works. Um, but it's not a particularly useful example. Um, all it's doing is it's saying, well, hey, 
we're going to listen on 8022 on this machine here and then that will tunnel through to whatever server, so therefore it's going to be uh, Zelapi, it's going to tunnel through to that box and then uh, if I connect to Telnet here, uh, so if I connect to this port here, it's going to take me through to that same port number on this box here and I don't have anything listening on there, so that's not really that useful. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, tunnel through to that port, sorry, tunnel from that port, and then we're going to go off to K1, and then we're going to go to 22. So what I'm saying here is that I'm going to listen on ports 8022 on this virtual machine here, and then when we get over to Zlappy, it is then going to connect to uh, host K1, which is actually this desktop, and then uh, and it will connect to it on port 22. Uh, so this means that then I can SSH to port 8022 um, and it, I'm actually going to end up, so I'm going to do it on this machine on localhost and I'll end up on uh, K1. So let's start that up. Okay, we have a tunnel there. Um, you'll notice also that this is inside screen. That's fine. So let's go here and we're going to uh, SSH localhost. Uh, I can't remember if it's a capital or a lowercase, we'll find out in a sec. Okay, so it's a lowercase. Ah, right, now, so that just means that um, I've done some other testing in the past. Now I can uh, do, so we've got this tunnel sitting in place here, and now I can uh, SSH localhost port 8022, and this should end me up on K1. Do it. There it is. So now I am actually tunneled over to this uh, over to this machine here. Cool. I forgot to add this little note here. Um, if we have a look, uh, we'll just come out of this here. Notice if you specify multiple hosts that it is actually going to generate separate port numbers for them. Um, this is a feature I meant for it to add for a long time, and I'd forgotten that I've actually added it. Um, so this means that you can then go and connect to lots and lots of hosts and um, all of them will just be incremented by one. Um, so let's just quickly do that again. Okay, and if we go Control A D to detach from the screen, you can actually see now on the terminal which one's which. That's all I'll uh, demonstrate here, but it just means that this is really useful for say if you wanted to connect to MySQL um, on a bunch of servers, you could create individual tunnels for them all, just like this. Cool. All right. Um, I think that'll about do it for this video. Um, any questions, stick them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.